Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to be talking about data assets. Now, data assets are very similar to data tables, but they're not used for the same purposes. So data assets are similar in the sense that you can use them as a collection. You know, so you can have a material, a mesh, a tag, something like that. But they're not like data tables, where data tables have rows and columns. Where data tables are read only, data assets are updatable. So where you can use them for a collection, like that mesh material tag, you can also use them for things like settings on a UI, and in some other, you can use them instead of casting. So let's get into an example. So for us to create a data asset, we first need to create a primary data asset. This is a specific kind of blueprint. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna go up to blueprint class and we're gonna look under all classes. Now in here, we're looking for data asset and what you're gonna see is primary data asset. This is what we want and we'll create that and we'll just call this PDA whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and open that up. Now, this is very similar to any other blueprint, but this is essentially like a structure for a data table. So we're going to add some variables in here. So we'll make this first one our mesh, and we'll change this to static mesh, object reference, and we'll create another one. Let's call this material, and we'll change this to a material instance object reference and let's add uh, and let's add a description and we'll just call this string. So now we have our primary data asset, almost like a structure. We can go ahead and create our data asset. So we'll take this and we're going to just put this to the side so we can compare. And now let's go ahead, we'll right click and we are going to go under miscellaneous and we're going to create a data asset. And we're gonna have our options in here, but we're looking for our primary data asset, our blueprint. So we'll select that and we will name this DA what what. And we can go ahead and open that up. Just pull this to the side. And we can see that we have all of the fields that we want. We have our mesh, our material, and our description. So essentially these can be little collections, whether you want some sort of character collection, an asset collection, or if you wanted to use this as settings for a UI, you could also do that. Now, one thing that we can note here is that each one of our variables, it doesn't matter if we make them public or not, right? You're still going to see them no matter what. They're still accessible. So for this what what, let's just add a mesh. We'll make this the arcade editor sphere and we'll just pick a random material, blue, and we'll give it a description, the best test ever, and we'll save that. Now say that we wanted to access this stuff, right? We need to create another blueprint. So in our content drawer, we're going to create a new blueprint class. And we'll just make it from actor and we'll call this BP what? And we'll open that up. And I do like doing things on construction script because we can test it out right away or we can make a tool. So we have our construction script open and now we wanna access that data asset. So what we're going to look for is a new variable. We'll call this our data. And we wanna look for our blueprint that we made, our primary data asset. So we want PDA, whatever, object reference. And now if we compile and save that, and we make this public, we can see that only our primary data assets of our particular one, the PDA, whatever, show up. So we can set this by default. We can just have one in there we'll compile and save. And now we wanna get this information. So we're gonna drag this out and we'll get data. And off of here, we can go down to variables, default, and we can get and set 
each one of those variables, right? So we could get this description, we could get the material, and we can get the mesh. And now we can go ahead and set these. You know, so if I had a static mesh in here, I could set the static mesh and I could set the material. So we'll compile and save. And we're just going to go ahead and drag out that asset, our BP what, and we can see that we have that arcade sphere and it has that material. And maybe we just want to add some text above it. So we'll add a text renderer. Let's take a look at the viewport here. So always put it in the front. And now in the construction script, we'll just drag out our text renderer and we will set text. Just plug that in to the value and we will rehook up these pins. Compile, save, and we can go and take a look and we can see our description. So now we could just go and create another data asset, right? We could duplicate this, call this what put two, open that up and we'll change the mesh to be a cube and we'll save that. And now we can change our data asset to what what two and we get our cube. So this is a good way to utilize these as a collection. Now, another useful thing that we can do is that we have access to functions in here. So we can create a new function in here, and maybe this is some sort of function that calculates some sort of math, you know, so maybe this is salary, right? And we can create a new variable, and we'll keep this simple. We'll just say cost per day, and we'll make this a float and we'll get our cost per day and we'll just multiply this by 360 days and we'll make one more variable and we'll call this salary call this current salary and we will set this just plug this in and we'll compile and save. And now if we go back to one of our data assets, we can see that we have both of these cost per day, current salary. If I set the cost per day in here, right, we'll just say that this is 200. You see that the current salary here does not update, right? And that's because we need to trigger this function. So back in our blueprint, that's managing all of this, our BP what, we are going to grab our data again. And instead of doing the description, we are going to get that function, the salary. We're gonna call it, right? So we're calling this function from our original primary data asset. And then after that, we are going to get salary, get current salary. And we'll put that into the text. And we will compile and save. And now let's go take a look. So for the cube. So now this is updated. It's linked up, right? So the cost per day is going through and then it's going back and setting the current salary. Now, if I switch this and we look at the first data asset, you'll see that the first data asset is not affected. So let's switch the data asset in the blueprint to 
the first one, where we have our sphere, and we will set this to 10. And you see, this is in the construction script, right? So we need to update it again. So we'll switch back to two, and we will switch back to one, and we see that that gets updated. Now, all of these things that we're doing in the construction script can also be done on event begin play, event tick, whatever you wanna do. But this is one of the powerful things about data assets. You can store this collection of information, but you can update them, and it can be shared between multiple assets. And while data tables are very convenient and have a similar functionality, data assets are prone to less errors as things get complex, and you can use them in more dynamic situations. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.